anytime I'm dancing with someone, I try to just watch what they do. Whatever I like, I say, okay, I'm gonna remember that for later. So in hip hop, they often cipher and they'll battle, right? When they try to take what your opponent does and you try to flip it on them or do it better, it's all about personality. And if you're not being authentic, people will call you on it. Tap dance is the exact same way. If you're exchanging with someone, you want to take what they do and you want to add to it. You know, you want to make it yours. And if you do it well, that's when there's an amazing exchange that happens with rhythm. Both dancers push each other to really reach their limit. Tap dance is percussion, tap dance is passion. It's the ultimate combination of music and dance. I mean, it's like you can see these amazing visuals, but at the same time, you're hearing what those visuals are saying. Tap is improvisation at its core. You're making it up as you go along. There's no preparation involved. When you really get deep into the culture, you start noticing how when you can improvise and when you can truly be free, that's when you're considered a hoofer and that's when you're considered a tap dancer. It's like someone who has a lightsaber versus someone who's a Jedi. Only a few people really feel the force and can use it. Tap dancers are percussionists. And there's so much we can do to create so many different variety of tricks and sounds and steps. For example, just using heels and toes, I hear bass and snare, right? Okay, so Gregory Hines is my favorite tap dancer. And the reason why is because he's the first tap dancer to me that really had this notion of rhyming to whatever his steps were doing. And what I mean is, I associate a lot of tap dancing and steps with words. And so when I'm trying to dance, I'm trying to make those words rhyme. So anyone who's not even a tap dancer can follow what I'm doing rhythmically. Gregory did this masterfully. So his style, very low and very rhythmic, and he used very simple ideas, we created whole themes with them, like... Tap history is American history. It literally evolved with our country. We started out with slaves and Irish indentured servants, for example, trading cultures back and forth, each having their own style. That mixed. 
and then you jump forward to jazz, and then you jump forward again to big band orchestra, then funk, and then now hip hop, dubstep. It can be applied to anything. middle school when 8 Mile came out and I was really sucked into like the battle culture into the concept of race and, and being a white rapper in the black community how that's just almost like being back in the day when you had the black performers within the white community and tap dancers there's a lot of parallels mix that with teenage angst and Eminem just seemed like the perfect answer to all of it when he raps it's not so simple. Yeah, they call me rabbit. This is a turtle race. He can't get with me spitting this shit. Wickedly lickety shot. The spooky spooky split lickety. And he's one of those rappers, along with cats like uh, Tech Nine, Buster Rhymes, these guys who sound like tap dancers, jumping syllable for syllable and, you know, polyrhythms, and they're just going all over uh, the phrase and all over the timing. And I think that's what tap dancers do. We have a through line, which is our music. But then what we're trying to do is stay syncopated and stay with the music, but also able to jump around it. And when a rapper is able to do that, I think that's what makes them truly great. in terms of how a word or step can be stretched, condensed, combined, and rhymed. I hit up my friend Minelik, really, really amazing spoken word artist and a really good friend of mine, and he agreed to sort of explore this idea, combining tap dancing with words. And instead of just tapping over a rap song to actually match what the rapper was doing, syllable for syllable, like beat for beat. My name is Menelik Tafari. I'm an educator, organizer, and poet. Yeah, so when Kenji first approached me, he was really talking about wanting to confront the toxic masculinity that, is, that exists in our culture while reinforcing the good. I mean, in this past year alone, we've seen a lot of violence enacted by men against women by confronting the ideology of toxic masculinity that we can begin to have a dialogue about what it means to be a man. Ain't I a man? Must I want to dominate, kill, and conquer to call myself a man? Hail up to those who question, iterate, and recreate their masculinities. Praises to those who find balance in the energies, even though we're not all there. I rape and pillage, destroy all my form, may I take and make the world. You can't ignore me, it's in days and race, sort of might unstoppable in a place of days. Two particles, can't cry no lie, you just a snitch. Pass the bottle for throttle, I drink the fifth. Go for help, you little sin. If you ask for help, you just a gift. Woman, you came from my river, you walk in sin. Now I've got your case from within, you let me in. Woman, you came from sin, you tumbled in. Now I've got your name from him, you let me in. What's in his hands, he breaks, it's like it's subliminal. What's in his heart, he picks, it's like he's not alive at all. In his hands, he takes his violence, his criminal. Half the world in fear, walking at night. 
Who in Rome packs up the Heather backs pinned against the wall? Gotta be polite just to stay alive through the night. Understand man's the most dangerous of them all. It ain't right. I'm most dodge and peril violence a man, social blight. I'm unfiltered, man, no box can hold me. I'm unfiltered, man, you can't look in, just know me. I'm more than a man, cause that's just one story. No more a man, it's a broken category. For me, tap is timeless. I don't think we should ever limit it to certain eras in time or certain musical ideas. And as long as you can find that heartbeat, you can tap to it. To me, I think that's how you keep this art form going forward.